Okay, so we have our fresh install of Call Manager. We are ready to get services activated and uh, start registering phones. In this video, I'm going to do a quick service activation, set up a couple of things, and register an IP communicator to our fresh Call Manager. So right away, let's go ahead and go into Cisco Unified Serviceability and click Go. And this is going to be the second set of credentials you um, created during the installation, the platform administrator credentials. So let me just put those in. And we are going to go to Tools, Service Activation. And then um, if you want, you can just do check all services, especially since this is a lab. This is not, I wouldn't hurt anything. I'm going to be a little bit choosy to make it go faster. I'm going to use Cisco Call Manager, Cisco CTI Manager, Cisco Extension Mobility, and uh, Cisco TFTP. The most important ones are Cisco TFTP and Cisco Call Manager. Uh, I'm also going to do Axel and UXL uh, and CTL provider and then I'm going to hit save. This will take a while so I'll do that and pause the video. Okay and you can see update operation successful. So now we'll go back up to the top right corner go into Cisco Unified CM Administration. This is the page where you're going to make most of your call manager changes. Okay, and now we are going to do a couple things to this call manager node. I'm going to go into Cisco Unified CM, click Find, and here is the server that we created. A couple things that I'm going to do, um, I am going to change this to the IP address since we are not using uh, DNS for our call managers. When I add a subscriber later, that's going to make things uh, easier. Uh, okay, universal device template, that's fine, that's fine. Auto registration. Um, yep, so I have it set to 7,000 and 8,000. Um, I did this earlier and had to re-record, so this was actually a, a little bit different. Um, but the fields that you'll have to change are right here. Change this to the auto registration template. Sample line template with tag usage examples and then it's easier to change you can use whatever range you want I chose 7,000 to 8,000 which is pretty excessive but it's easier to change the first one or I'm sorry the second one before this one uh, otherwise it's going to give you an annoying pop-up saying you have to the the ending directory number needs to be greater than the starting directory number um, and then you want to make sure that this is unchecked um, because we are going to auto register phones it uh, it just makes things easier in my opinion so I'm going to uncheck that and click save okay that is good um, and then I'm going to make a Cisco Unified CM group so system Cisco Unified CM group and there is going to be a default I'm going to add a new one and I'm going to call this one Prefer Publisher. And this will come into play when we add a second node to the cluster for high availability. Um, what will happen is this will be the first one that phones will try to register with. But if it's unreachable, the phones will fail over to the second call manager that's in that group. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Okay, and we should be ready to register a phone. So if I go into device, phone, there should be no phones found. Um, I already have IP Communicator installed on my computer. I have another video that walks you through that entire process if you are interested. Um, go ahead and find that. That might be helpful. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and... Open IP Communicator and run as administrator. And I'm going to have to go through a tuning wizard. You don't have to see this part. Okay, that is starting up. 
and now it should reach out and find the call manager. Um, it only knows how to find it because I'm going to go into preferences, network, and this is a bogus one. It may be filling a second one, but this is the IP address of the call manager that I built. So it's actually going to reach out to that IP address for registration information. And that's why checking that TFTP um, service was so important because that is what gets used for this process. So I'm going to click OK, and I see that it is registered actually with 7001. Um, if it was the first phone, it would be 7000. Like I said, I had to re record due to microphone issues. Um, but yeah, we are good to go. You can see this annoying services thing, and that has to do with the auto registration template um, we looked at earlier. Uh, we will go through more uh, device pools, directory numbers, um, calling search spaces and partitions in uh, upcoming videos in this series. But for that video, that is it. Um, if you like that, please like and subscribe. And this is a series that I will continue adding to. Uh, if there's something uh, you would like to know, go ahead and comment that and I will uh, do my best to work that in. Thanks for watching.